Okay, I'm going to show you a really neat effect uh, to dissolve away the skin of a surface to show something underneath. And I have an animation that I've already made here uh, of a simple sphere that we're using to demonstrate this technique. And I have it loaded into the backdrop, and we're going to show that just scrubbing through. So if I just scrub through the animation, you can see the skin dissolving away and showing it underneath. And I'm going to go to the middle frame, or actually a little bit farther. And as you can see, we have this nice trail of fire going around the skin of the object as it's dissolving away. And then showing uh, just a beveled sphere that we have underneath, showing our kind of mechanical uh, underlay, sort of the inner workings of the object. And it's a pretty neat effect. It's real simple to do, and I'm going to show you that now. And what we did to create that was we have our clip map. So if we go to our image editor and we load in uh, the clip map that we've included on the DVD, and you select, and all you got to do is just load in the first frame of that animation or of that image sequence and set the image type to sequence down here and now if we scrub through you can kinda see that image sequence that we have here and it's a nice little dissolving frame and I, this is actually uh, 1024 by 1024 uh, pixels so it's quite large so you can use it for close-up shots as well and not just anything far away and it's good to have uh, that variety of larger maps now this sequence is 73 frames long so we can't have it lasting longer than 73 frames in the shot or else it's gonna get a little bit, you'll have some stepping in there and a real uneven animation so I've also gone ahead and included on the DVD a few extra clip maps uh, totaling a little bit longer uh, I think some of them go up to maybe 150 frames uh, some maybe even longer alright so I'm gonna close this out right now and we're going to go into Modeler and uh, build that object that we just saw dissolving away. And basically what we had was I'll just create a ball. Just going into the Create tab, selecting Ball, and just pulling that out. And I'm constraining with the middle mouse button, or you can use Control to pull that out so it makes a perfect sphere. I'm going to hit N on the keyboard and give our sides 48 and our segments, change that to 24. You could also make this a tessellated sphere, but this is fine for what we're doing right now. And keep in mind, this works for just about every single object that you'll encounter. So don't just think you can only apply this to spheres, because of course this is for if you're blowing up anything, uh, if you're going to break up, uh, like in our last tutorial, our planet, we could easily apply this effect to each one of our pieces of the planet that we're kind of blowing off, or if you're blowing up. Uh, a nice spaceship or like an airplane or something you can have a blow up in the pieces of it flying off at the camera and dissolving away and giving a real and nice effect okay we have our ball and we're gonna give this a surface name and we're just gonna call it skin so like the outer skin and I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard or control C to copy and I'm gonna go to layer 2 and paste that I'm also gonna stick layer 1 now in the background and hit shift H on the keyboard and I'm gonna size that down and you don't want to size it down too much because this is actually gonna be uh, our burn layer and we want to make sure that our action center is set to our, our, oops, sorry, our mode is set to selection and that way the entire object will scale down equally so I'm gonna undo what I had and we can zoom in here real close and just pull that in a nudge just so we get barely into the surface now if, depending on how complex your object is this might be difficult you might not be able to use the size tool you might have to actually go in and manually uh, move in some of the points but you want to get it as close to the outer edge as possible and that way we don't create a shadow in between the two images because we're going to be burning away the outer uh, skin layer and then the inner skin layer which is like the fire 
uh, we're going to have a delay on, so that way we get that nice edge. So I'm going to give this second layer a surface name now, and we're going to call this Burn, and click OK. And I'm going to go to the Surface Editor right now and just change up our colors here. So we're going to change Burn to just like an orange color, and Skin to a dark gray, just so that we can differentiate the two right now. And now we also want to create our inner skin layer, which is another object. And this time, uh, I'm going to use our ball tool again, but I'm going to scale down the amount of segments and sides that we have on it. So I'm going to hit N on the keyboard. Once we've pulled all this out, change our sides to 24 and our segments to 12. And I'm going to do that on the Y so that we get this uh, smaller circular sections uh, up on top. I'm going to close that out, hit the space bar and that ends the tool. I want to zoom in here now and actually I'm going to take that first layer out of the background so we can see that skin and we don't want to be going on the outside of that skin layer. I'm going to use shift H again to size and I'm just going to size out up until that edge and as you can see we have different amounts of segments, half as much so we just want to make sure that these points aren't going outward of the other points and as long as we have our mode set to selection we'll make sure that no matter where we click that it sizes from the center and we created it from that center of the grid so we don't have to worry about that okay uh, now we're going to give this a surface name to this new layer and we're just going to call it inside and we also want to make this a little more interesting and what we did to make our sort of inside structure for that sample animation I showed you just hit B on the keyboard with all of our polygons selected and just bevel it inward making sure that you're not extruding out at all and that you're mostly just shifting it inward so that way we don't go outside of that skin object and then right mouse click to add a little more geometry pull it down a little more right mouse click again and pull it down even more and then you could right mouse click again and kinda end it off so we could add smoothing on this and we'll get a nice effect so I'll pull up our surface editor and under the inside surface I'll give it that smoothing and as you can see that it's not extremely interesting but it's a neat looking object and it kinda gives the just gives you an idea of what you can do with it of course you could add uh, countless numbers of inside objects you could uh, use some debris objects uh, large debris objects and throw them in there just model a custom structure for the inside like you're saying this is just a generic thing we're showing just to show you how to apply the effect and how to use it but like I said it can apply to any any object at all and of course we could make our own custom framework in the inside that's a little more interesting than just something like this okay so now we want to save it so we're gonna hit S on the keyboard and I had already saved that so no dialogue really came up and now what we want to do is send this object into layout so click the little tab up there send object to layout and now we have our object in layout and we're not really paying too much attention to the size right now uh, we will once we start applying to the textures and things like that but just for this example we're not really paying attention to size because there's nothing really to compare it to and it's just a sphere there's not really anything so uh, what I want to do now is start applying our clip map and we can do that right away and since we already have it loaded in our image editor we don't have to worry about loading it in again uh, but I do want to clone this sequence so that we can offset it for our second layer and to do that you just click clone and duplicate and as you can see there's a plus sign next to it and we're going to change our start frame on this second one for we'll set it to 10 and what that's going to do is it's going to start your first your first clip map is going to start at 0 frame 0 and the second one's going to start at frame 10 and what that's going to do is it will start right now of course we don't have a preview in uh, layout but as we're scrolling across then at 10 that second one will start and that will give us our spacing so I'm going to apply that clip map now to each one of the objects and do a test render and show you what the surfaces look like right now. So hit Shift O on the computer and or on the keyboard, sorry, 
and hit P and uh, we're gonna select layer 1 you, of course if you want to you could go uh, back into the modeler and apply these or give these layers names uh, but I'm just gonna leave them at layer 1, 2, and 3 because there's not many objects in the scene and we really don't need to change the name on them so for layer 1 we're gonna go to render and next to clip map there's this little T and that means we can add a texture to it so I'm gonna click on that and now we have a texture editor for this object and keep in mind this isn't a surface this is something that affects the polygons of the object alright so we can go ahead now and change this we have it set to image map on layer type and we're gonna change our projection to cubic and we're gonna select image dissolve 02 sequence which is our first uh, sequence and I'm going to turn off pixel blending because we have a it's a high resolution image so we're not really going to get any pixelation unless we zoom in extremely far as for size um, one meter should be fine but actually we'll increase that because our, our grid size right now is one meter and as you can see our sphere is several meters and we want to apply this effect quite large so I'm going to change it to four so if I go four meters, and that's pretty much going to show the whole uh, dissolve on each side. I'll click use texture, and now I'm going to select layer. T Actually, before we do that, I'm going to open up our texture editor again, and I can copy selected layer, use texture, go to our layer two, select the T for clip map paste replace all layers and now we have that same everything all set up exactly the same as we do on the other one but all we have to do is change that sequence to the one with the plus sign next to it click use texture and now we can close this out and we're gonna go ahead and scrub uh, to about frame 30 and hit F9 to render and click continue and as you can see now we have this clip map that first layer dissolving away and since we have a 10 frame uh, delay we have this nice little spacing in between the two now if you want to expand this amount of burn because uh, right now this is quite small we could change it to a higher number so if we go to our image editor right now and sequence plus and change our start frame to 20 then go ahead and render that you can see it's doubled in size and it's starting to look a lot better now we need to talk about our actual surface of or like the texture of our inside burn layer and what we want to do I'll just close that out right now is open up our surface editor and for our burn texture we want to increase our luminosity to 100 percent we're gonna keep our diffuse at 100 and that way we get that nice shadowing in there but we also want to add a texture map for the color and that way it's gonna give more variation so it's not just a bright yellow all the way around we want to add variation as if uh, it's not all burning at the same uh, heat levels and different things like that it'll just give us a little more variation look a lot better so I'm gonna hit that T next to the color and we're going to change our layer type to procedural gradient uh, change our texture size to two meters and our texture color to almost a black and give it an orange so a very very dark orange so it's almost like a brown we want to change the contrast of we're using a turbulence for our procedural type which is the default setting and usually works really well for this and we're going to change our contrast to 50%, our small power to 0.75, and our frequency is to 7. And if you take a look now, we have this nice little variation in here, and that's what our surface is going to look like overall. So we're going to get lots of little variations in there, different darkness levels. And if you want to make that even more, you could change your frequencies up higher, 12. And the more frequencies you add, just it's the more instances of the texture you could also change the small power to one and that'll go even tinier but we don't need to do that 0.75 is fine we'll change the frequencies down to seven and click use texture and actually 
Uh, because we have luminosity on, if you wanted to, you could change that all the way down to black on that, and you won't really be able to tell too much. So we're going to do a, another test render, and just F9 to render that frame. And as you can see, we have that blackness in there, and that darkness throughout the whole texture. It gives that nice variation, so it's brighter on some sides than it is on the others. Now the way we made it glow was applying a glow effect to it, and that's real simple. We'll pull up our surface editor again, and first we're just going to take this skin texture and hit smoothing, uh, just to get rid of that pixelate or that polygon look on the outside, and go back to our burn texture. And under the advanced tab, we have a glow intensity, which is right underneath special buffers. And we're just going to type in 100%. It's the only thing glowing in the scene, so we really don't need any variables. And now we need to pull up our effects panel and our image processing. So hit Control F8. It's going to bring up that panel for you. And for adding the glow, we just need to check Enable Glow. And now we have our settings, which is our intensity, so how bright it is, and our glow radius. And now glow radius is a fixed rate. It goes by pixel and not by percentage. Therefore, uh, the closer we are to the object, the bigger the glow is going to appear. The f or I'm sorry, it's the other way around. Uh, the closer the object, the smaller the glow is going to appear, and the farther away, the bigger. So if I set this glow radius right now to 16 pixels and our intensity to 150, we'll take a look at our render right now. We'll go to our camera view, and I'll just kind of show you the differences. Uh, as far as it goes f distance from the camera from the object. So I'm going to render that frame. It's going to apply that glow effect. And actually that's really, really bright right now. We can tone that down a bit. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that Control F8 to bring this back up. And our glow radius I'm going to change down to 12 and the intensity to 75. Just so we don't get so much of a glow on there. Because we want it to be enough to show off but kind of subtle at the same time we could even go ahead and this yellow doesn't look good so we can go to our surface editor under the burn and we want to give it an orange more orange color and since we with glow effect 2 it'll actually brighten up that surface and not just create a glow but make the surface a lot brighter and as you can see we still have yellow in there even though we made it kind of a dark orange but it looks more like something's burning away and we have this nice glow effect. Now we're about half size in our the camera's about halfway into the scene uh, as far as distance from the object. So we're going to zoom in now. Uh, just grab our camera, hit T on the keyboard, and we're going to zoom in. And it's creating a key right now for that, but we're not really going to do an animation. So that that'll be fine. And now we're going to render this closer up. And as you can see. Well, we do have a little bit of pixelation in there, because uh, we are rather close. And we do have our clip map created kind of large. But as you can see, the glow around the edges isn't very much, because it's the same size glow as it would be no matter what the distance is. So now if I zoomed out really far, or just moved the camera away really far, and rendered that, we're going to see a big difference. And as you can see, we have it the same width as it is before but it looks like it's covering more of the object so it's really based on size or it's all based on pixels so you want to make sure that you're setting that glow radius and keeping in mind uh, distance the object if you hit control F8 again you can also create an envelope for that glow radius so if we had the camera moving away from the image we could make the glow radius large at first and then make it smaller as we hit our or as our camera moves farther away from the object and we're not going to go ahead and we're not going to texture this object anymore and if we render it actually at frame 0 you'll see there's absolutely nothing going on in the scene and i'm going to delete that key for the camera so we go back to where we were. Oh, created one. Uh, delete it. And if we go towards the end of the animation around frame 55, and I'm going to render that. And as you can see, we have more of a dissolve in there. And just as 
move along in that 72 frames, I think it was. Uh, I'll double check that. 73 frames. It slowly fades away. And of course, it looks real jumbled right now. If we were to throw uh, anti aliasing on that, so Shift C, P, select anti aliasing, 3 pass, and then render that. It looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. You can see we have that nice glow around the edges. And of course, like I said, you can increase that glow effect. Uh, we might want to increase it a little bit more, maybe to just up to 100%, uh, 14 on that glow radius. Take a look at that. You just want to play around with it until it looks good. And that looks much better. Of course, our surface underneath doesn't look very good, and our actual skin surface doesn't look very good. But the overall effect is pretty neat. Now there's also another technique you can do with this and if we switch to our perspective view here if we select our object layer 3 and just delete it out of the scene so hit the minus key on the keyboard hit enter and now that object is gone so if we go into our animation a little and render and take a look you can see that the inside object is completely gone we're going to replace that with a point light. And we're going to get a really neat effect to shine light rays out of that object. Now, since we deleted the inside object, we're going to need to add double sided to our objects, our surfaces. And you also want to make sure uh, we didn't do this, turn smoothing on that glow object. But we're going to set it to double sided go to our skin object, set that to double sided so now we can see the inside of the object. So if I render that again you'll be able to see the inside of the object or the back of the object through the inside and you can see before that was black. So we need to make sure we have double siding on if we're going to do this. Plus we also have to have double siding on for this effect to work at all because of the shadows because we're going to be using ray tracing. And we're going to go ahead and turn that on right now so if you hold down control and shift right mouse click and we can select render options and under the rendering tab just check ray trace shadows and that's going to make a big difference too when we're rendering the frame and I'll just show you that it'll take a little bit longer to render but not too much uh, you can't really see too much you can see a little on uh, the sides over here but overall since there's really only one object in the scene it's not going to make that big of a difference since it's just a sphere Okay, so now we're gonna. I'm gonna go back to our perspective view and get a better view. And under the items tab, I want to, under add, click light and point light. And click OK. And now for our. We want to bring up our light properties. So Shift L, but since we just created it, it should be already be selected in the lights tab. And hit P on the keyboard to bring up your properties. Uh, we're also going to open up Viper right now, so you can go to Render and select Viper, and that'll open it up. And if it doesn't open it up, you can hit F7 on the keyboard, and that will open Viper. All right. And since there's nothing in the scene right now, if we go to Render, Viper contains no data to render. Of course, we don't have anything in this option selected for that light, but we do want to do a quick render just to add that data into Viper so that we can see our object as we're working with the effect. So close out that. And now if we render we can see that object in the Viper preview. And I'm going to set this from draft to normal. You can see a little bit better, less pixelation. Okay, now under the basics tab for this second light, this point light, I'm going to select volumetric lighting. And then click on the the button for volumetric lighting options. Click render and of course you can't see anything right now because nothing is applied. Uh, we can use a preset for this and it's actually one of my favorite presets. I use it quite a bit for uh, blowing things up and different effects because it's, it's, it's actually a really good preset and you can change it and make a lot of adjustments to it. So we're gonna hit F8 on the keyboard to pull up our V-Light preset panel and under point lights select gaseous and just click yes it's just warning you that it might change the size of the object but that's okay because we haven't done anything to it yet
If I click render, you still can't see anything. So we're going to increase our radius. And as you can see, there's a preview in uh, the main part, the main view here. And we have this circle on the outside. And that's how large it actually is. So it's giving you a preview of how big the light is. And if we look in the Viper here, we can see that volumetric light is starting to show up. We're going to make this bigger so it's pretty much all the way out of bounds of the camera. And that's also, it's not very bright. And you're not getting any light rays or anything like that, like that because with Viper, you're not ray tracing. And I'm going to go to our render options now and change our show render in progress to 320 by 240 and then render that frame and if you look now I'll just go ahead and pause it okay and sorry by pause I mean pause my recording of the tutorial so that we could skip the actual watching the render as you can see uh, that effect just isn't really that special it doesn't really look that good we're not getting intense light rays out of this so what we're going to need to do is change our luminosity for our light and I'm going to minimize this so that we can compare because if we minimize this every time we render under layer it will add a new layer so if we minimize this then it will add more layers to it and we can compare our images so I'm going to increase our luminosity and as you can see in that preview render it's really starting to bring out the light and what we want to do is bring the most intense part of the light all the way out past that object and that way we're gonna get some really nice light rays but as you can see we have this real intense fall off on the end so we can make our radius larger and under attenuation increase that and that'll decrease our fall off and then increase our luminosity a little more and just kinda of play around with it until you get the effect you're looking for. We could also change the density, make it a little bit higher. And that looks like it should be pretty good. Uh, and right now I'm actually going to turn down our anti-aliasing level so it frames render a little quicker. Shift C, P on the keyboard, change our anti-aliasing just to one pass. Uh, there's also one other thing we can do, actually if we pull that back our volumetric options again, so hit shift L, hit P on the keyboard, click on volumetric light options, making sure that our point light is selected, and we have quality. Right now it's at the low, and with the low setting, you're going to get some weird looking effects, and I'll render that right now and show you what it's going to look like at low quality. Okay, if we take a look at our render now, it's it looks really bad. <laughs> and that's because uh, all these circles in here are actually part of what the shadows are. And that's just because the light quality is so low. And also if we take a look at our glow effect here, when adding uh, volumetric lighting, glow effect will add to that volumetric light. So we also need to adjust, adjust our glow effect down a little. And we're going to increase the pixels because as you can see it's not going out very far. And actually, uh, So I'm going to open up. Uh, hit control F8 and under enable glow intensity we're going to change to 50 and our radius we're going to change to 20 pixels close that out and now for our volumetric light options we're going to change our quality to best and now render that frame okay as you can see our light beams look a heck of a lot better than they did before we don't have those weird circles from those specific shadows from everything and it's what it's pretty much doing is stepping the shadows uh, along those streaks and the higher the quality the more steps you're gonna get so the better the overall quality is gonna be of course I more than tripled my rendering time by doing that so the better the quality the longer the render and it, pretty much everything is like that uh, in 3D and it's something you really just gotta deal with and <laughs> wait until technology gets a little bit faster even though uh, as far as 3D technology always seems to be a, uh, much more ahead than our processing power uh, our glow effect still looks a little weird on there so we could even increase that a little more if we wanted to 
uh, as you can see down here and a lot of that is just because like I said it's taking the volumetric light and blending it with our glow effect surface but this is a really neat technique like I said so as the animation goes along you'll see uh, once we get to the beginning of the animation once that little tiny hole will break through we'll get a burst of light out of there and then as we go along throughout the animation it'll slowly turn into that full volumetric light with no shadows on it whatsoever uh, and in that case if you go to that full end of the animation you can just apply an envelope to the intensity or the luminosity or the dissolve uh, dissolve would probably be best of this volumetric light and have it fade out but like I said this is a really cool looking effect and once you get it all rendered and have an animation you could also add a little bit of rotation to it and have the beams uh, rotating around with the object and it's just something that's really really cool and something a great addition to add to any pieces that you have flying off of your object uh, it's usually something you want to use large pieces you don't want to go and apply this to a uh, thousand debris objects just because it would take for absolutely for and forever to render uh, unless you of course you did that before you used maybe FX linker and we kinda covered that in the debris section but it's a neat effect and like I said if you're making a spaceship you could have something flying towards the scene and it works for pretty much any image or uh, sorry any model but depending on how complex the model is or what the shape is you might have to do a little bit more to model that inside burn away layer 